Hi, so I thought I'd start in the front yard here and focus only on those things that are not um, covered by the automatic sprinkler system. So first up, underneath the kitchen window here, um, that plant, uh, which is really at end of life, that, that needs to be watered on occasion. Our gardener has been doing that, but you might want to check on it, or you might, frankly, you might just want to pull it out at some point. Now, moving over, looking at the roses that are on the right-hand side of the driveway, um, these roses do need to be hand watered. They will get some residual moisture from the sprinkler system, but um, insufficient for them to grow and prosper. So uh, they should be watered in the summertime um, at least once a week. Uh, when it's hot, it would be preferable to do it twice a week. As you can see, I've added some uh, wooden barriers from one uh, spot to the next. Uh, to, because this is a slope, uh, roses need deep watering. So without those wooden barriers, the water would just run from top to bottom and the roses would never get enough uh, moisture. So again, I do recommend that you, um, probably better to start up here, run the hose for a while, and then come to each one of these separate wells and water them until, you know, water it until the water start, starts running over the side. And again, I would do that um, preferably on a, you know, twice a week when it's hot, once a week uh, minimum uh, during, you know, the spring, summer, and part of the fall. And in the winter, of course, you don't, really don't have to wa uh, worry about them at all. Now in the backyard, starting uh, near the storage shed and working my way along the uh, outer perimeter in a counterclockwise fashion, uh, these two roses in front of me are... Um, to the right is a Sally Holmes, and to the left is an Iceberg um, Rose. They're both vigorous caning, growing uh, uh, caning uh, roses, and they'll cover this entire fence. Um, they need to be watered on the same schedule as the roses um, alongside the driveway. Now, back behind the pool, you can see some uh, shrubby uh, flowers, a couple of rose uh, shrub roses or bush roses, uh, they, <clears throat> they could stand some watering uh, maybe uh, once a week. Uh, I don't worry about them too much. But the Japanese maple, um, the Japanese maple benefits from the watering of the lawn. So you could you probably really don't have to do much with the Japanese maple, but it would be nice uh, when the weather is really warm to water it you know, once a week or so. But again, you really don't have to do that because it should be getting enough moisture from uh, the lawn watering. Now, coming around to the left are the larger uh, Sally Holmes roses. As you can see, there's sort of the remnants of one of, the, uh, one of those roses um, um, off here. And that was the most beautiful, vigorous grower that I had, and for some reason it died last year. So at some point, I think you can just uh, take that, uh, take the, um, take that stump out and remove it. And I would recommend not replacing it because, frankly, it was starting to crowd out the Japanese maple. So uh, we may be better off without a rose there. These other Sally Holmes roses, there are three remaining. And they need to be, they should be watered on the same schedule as the other roses that I mentioned. And again, you can give them a good soaking each time. I'd probably water each one for a minute or so. Now coming around to the um, uh, bush roses uh, on the back fence to the left of the Sally Holmes, these again, they should be watered um, uh, once a week or so, perhaps more when it's warm. Um, but they do benefit from, uh, I think, more than the other roses from uh, the, the spray on the grass. So again, I think they should be watered once a week in the summertime, maybe twice if it's hot, but um, they're hardier than the big uh, showy caning roses, so you don't have to worry too much about them. And coming back here, this is a, a camellia. Um, that should be watered. Uh, the, the more frequently, the better. Uh, but pretty much the same rule of thumb. Whenever you come into the backyard to, or whoever's going to do this, whenever you're watering the roses, just pretty much do all this stuff at the same time. This camellia, this one, and then there's a hydrangea uh, back in the corner. 
Uh, same as the one over here to the left, just outside the office window. Um, uh, hydrangeas like water, they also like shade, so they're getting uh, pretty well shaded here, but uh, in the summertime, if you could water them on the sa same schedule as the roses, that would be that would be great. And moving to the left here at the back of the house, uh, the camellias, the, the kind of dwarf camellia here, and the very large one to its left, um, you can water those on occasion, but they're so well established and, and the roots are deep enough that I think that they're, they probably get sufficient water from um, the um, sprinklers over the lawn. But again, in the summertime, it would probably be a good thing to water them uh, once a week. Same thing applies to this um, uh, camellia. It's never really done as well here, and that's pro probably because it experiences a lot more, gets a lot more sun than the camellias um, to the right and uh, on the back fence. So coming around here to the uh, hydrangeas outside the uh, sliding glass door of the master bedroom. Uh, this isn't an ideal location for them, but the more you can water these, the better. They, they prefer probably a daily watering in the summertime, but again, you can get by um, with watering them once a week or maybe twice when it's hot. And just expect that in a hot season, Eventually, they'll just start to look kind of dry and parched, and that's okay. They, they may shrivel up, but they'll come back fine the next year. And then, um, same rule with uh, these hydrangeas, uh, again, outside the uh, master bedroom window. And there are two ro uh, three roses in this, in this spot here. Uh, the shrub roses... Um, uh, there are one main one that goes from about here to here, and then you can see the color at the bottom change to pink um, right about there. So those are two shrub roses, and then the, the caning climbing rose is a Cecil Bruner. I think it's called a Cecil Bruner, and that blooms once. It's the first thing to bloom on the property. It blooms, um, I think, in late March, early April. It's really spectacular. It blooms. Uh, the blooms fade, and it's done until the next year. Um, this whole um, planter's box should be watered with the same frequency as the other roses on the property.